Death in a video game is pretty much one of those unavoidable things. At some point or another, you'll press the wrong button or be in the wrong place at the wrong time and boom, you'll be eating that digital dirt like a worm at a buffet. However, not all is lost, my friend, because as this is a virtual experience, you'll be able to reload your save and get right back into the fray. Yet, this does seem to be a bit of a double-edged sword in itself, for while you can indeed try again and again and again, sometimes the checkpoints given to you in order to do so are absolutely ridiculous forcing you to slog your way back through difficult terrain to even get to the point of previous demise, or making you watch the same cutscene over and over, which is a sin in itself, by the way. So let's make a save right now and take a look at times where getting over the hump was made much more difficult for these bizarre reasons. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 worst video game checkpoints ever. Number 10. The Library – Halo the original Halo's library is without question the most infamous and widely despised mission in the entire franchise to date, a soul-sappingly repetitive slog through numerous near-identical floors while battling a seemingly infinite fleet of the Flood. Yay! The library can take over an hour to clear on higher difficulties, in large part due to the level's legendarily awful approach to checkpointing. In certain situations, you won't hit a checkpoint until every last enemy in the vicinity has been wiped out, no matter how small, and when you're dealing with the Flood, that's a metric shed load of foes to take down. But what makes this even worse is that it's never consistent, meaning that sometimes you'll pop a checkpoint right as the enemy forces arrive, and others only when you've made it through with a shred of health left. Ugh. Number 9. Look at all that juice. Gears of War. If you've ever played the original Gears of War on higher difficulties, you'll likely have the phrase LOOK AT ALL THAT JUICE burned into your brain, as the Act 3 finale, Tip of the Iceberg, offers up one of the most infuriatingly ill-placed checkpoints, and say it with me, kids, OF ALL TIME! After entering the pumping station and listening to a minute-long chit-chat between Marcus and his team, you'll need to take down a fleet of Theron guards. Now, this is easily one of the most challenging set pieces in the entire game, because the guards come equipped with torque bows, which is a one-hit kill if you get tagged with it. Therefore, you will, thanks to the accuracy of these elite troops, die countless times and be forced to listen to that jaw-jacking all over again. Just put the bloody checkpoint at the beginning of the combat. Please. Seriously, it gets so bad when you're playing this game on insane that you genuinely might go insane for how many attempts that you'll need. Number 8. Loose Ends – Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 so if we're being honest, most of the Call of Duty games are guilty of some dodgy, reactive checkpointing. But nowhere was this more egregious than in Modern Warfare 2. This game has quite frankly got a brilliant campaign, but what a pain in the arse it was at times. Take for example Loose Ends, which is infamous not just for giving us a huge betrayal moment and also the deaths of fan-favorite characters, but also for its erratic and agonizing checkpoints. At the tail end of the level, the player has to make a mad dash for the landing zone in order to be extracted, or so you think, while a avoiding mortar fire, and it's this mortar fire which is mortifying on veteran difficulty because it might as well be set to homing missile for how accurate they are. What makes this a true ball egg though is that this game often respawns you right in the middle of the chaos, meaning that you might well die again mere seconds after respawning. It's very possible to get locked in a spam cycle of pain and that, my friends, well that's no bueno. Number 7. All of the Bosses – Control Though Remedy's Control was one of 2019's best-reviewed games, there was one common complaint among fans and critics alike – the more-than-iffy checkpoint system. While for the most part the core experience is passable enough, the limitations of the game's checkpoints became abundantly clear for those who dared to tackle Control's optional boss fights. Basically, in the event that you're killed by any of these bosses, you'll be thrown back to a control point and have to spend a few minutes making your way back to the boss. Come on, I mean, what is this, Dark Souls? It felt totally out of place for many, and as such, these optional bosses hold a place of ire within the fanbase for their delivery. Number 6. The Krogan Battlemaster – Mass Effect the original Mass Effect, for all of its brilliance, is a tad rough around the edges on a technical level, as best exemplified by what is also one of the toughest encounters in the entire game, rescuing Liara from the Krogan Battlemaster. The fight itself being extremely difficult is one thing, but making matters immeasurably worse is Bioware's boneheaded decision to place the nearest checkpoint not simply before the battle, but before the unskippable three-minute cutscene that precedes it. Now, sure, you can mash your way through the dialogue to save some time, but it's still an infuriating cinematic brick wall ahead of a fight which can literally take hours to get past, depending on your skill level and loadout. But this actually hilariously led to an exploit being found where you can manually save the game after the cutscene and load it back up and the game thinks that you've beaten the boss. Yeah, how do you like that, you goddamn asshole? Number 5. Any Level on Brutal Mode – Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection 
As astoundingly well crafted as the Uncharted franchise might be, it's painfully clear that the remastered Nathan Drake collection, which was outsourced to Blue Point Games rather than completed by Naughty Dog themselves, was sent out into the wild without sufficient playtesting at higher difficulties. The remaster introduced an additional brutal difficulty, in which the player only deals half the damage of normal while taking quadruple the damage from enemy fire. Oh, and by the way, ammo is pretty much bloody non existent. The result is a game that would be unbalanced to the point of hilarity were it not so genuinely annoying. Now, you might spend legitimately hours in just one section of the game only to make it out through random luck. This doth not a good video game make, friends, especially when two to three bullets will see you hit the deck. If you're attempting this mode with this checkpoint system, good luck, mate, as you're gonna need it. Number 4. The Trials of Archimedes – God of War Ascension God of War Ascension's Trial of Archimedes is largely accepted to be the toughest action sequence in the entire franchise, a brutally unforgiving 10-minute endurance trial in which the player has to fight through three waves of increasingly vicious enemies, without any checkpoints or health or magic orbs. Sounds brilliant, doesn't it? And failure, of course, forces you to start the whole sorry excursion from the beginning, and even on normal difficulty, many players reported spending hours just trying to get through this section. Sony Santa Monica received enough flack from fans that they eventually patched the trial to throw some orbs at players after every wave, though amusingly they didn't add in any extra checkpoints to ensure that fans still had to work bloody hard for their victory. Number 3. The Entire Game – Perfect Dark Zero Perfect Dark Zero wasn't merely content to be just a disappointing prequel to the legendary N64 FPS, but became genuinely aggravating with its enthusiastically backwards approach to checkpoints. And by that, I mean that in every mission, there is just one. Yes, that's right, one checkpoint for you to go back to, and they are usually placed in the strangest moments of the level. You could legitimately die and have to spend 15 minutes just to get back to where you were, with the mission itself only being 20 minutes in total. It is utterly bizarre, to say the least. And you best pray to God that you're not doing this on a higher difficulty because this will become the bane of your life. Because get this, sometimes the levels now choose not to give you that soul checkpoint at all. Brilliant. Number 2. Three Leaf Clover – Grand Theft Auto 4 Though some Rockstar fans might argue that the developers' more recent games are a little too generous with the checkpoints for their own good, this is a welcome alternative to their brutal prior approach to saving progress. Before Grand Theft Auto 5, the series' mainline titles didn't offer mid-mission checkpoints at all, and while most of the levels were bite-sized and easy to beat, when it came to Three Leaf Clover in Grand Theft Auto 4, oh my god, they created a monster. You see, this level is one of the best in the entire franchise, but actually playing through 20 minutes without messing up once is a huge ask for some players. Luckily, this has been fixed as we say with newer games, but for a while, this acted as the true final exam that players had to pass if they wanted to see the rest of Nico's narrative. And number 1. The Hollow Hollow Bird – Byton Kytos Origins Cult classic RPG Byton Kytos Origins has one truly piss-taking example that makes sure that the player is air quotes ready for the rest of the game by locking them in a hellhole which requires a near-perfect run in order to succeed. Now, basically, the player is invited to save their game at the end of Disc 1, and the very beginning of Disc 2 immediately throws them into an extremely challenging boss fight against the Hollow Hollow Bird. Now, Due to the immediacy of this battle, there's no way for players to back up if they don't feel ready for this fight, and so beyond trying out some different deck combinations, you'll basically screwed if you can't get past it. Though most players are advised to create a second save slot near the end of Disc 1 to save themselves a major headache, for many who went blindly into this fight without this helpful information, they were just forced to replay the 15-ish hours of Disc 1 all over again. 15 hours. Just let that sink in. And there we go, my friends. Those were the 10 worst video game checkpoints ever. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me about video games, TV, film, and anything else, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We focus today a lot about video game checkpoints, but let me check in with you, my friend, because I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you are treating yourself fairly, both mentally and physically, and I hope that you're taking the time to check in with yourself as well and ask yourself some important questions like, Am I okay? Could I do things better? Am I wasting my energy on certain situations? Because you know what? A bit of perspective, that's a very healthy thing to attain because it can allow you to put your energy into better places, know when to ask for help, or even just make you realize that, damn, this isn't right for me at all. And that is very okay sometimes. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon, all right?